they are they are not forced to work because it will be violative of right against involuntary servitude. But because of the possible evaluation in the future, you will be compelled more, uh, I think, by moral ascendancy to work beyond eight hours. I, I think for one month, you ako natutulog dati dun eh. You know, I think for one month, during during that time. Because I want to be promoted, you know, based on the evaluation, uh, this, this student, even Christmas, is counting inventory, oh, he, is, he complied with the standard set. Now, especially to schools, in order to become a professor, you have to make research. And you have to definitely present it before the national conference, international. Afterwards, another dissertation for your doctorate, you have to present it again so that you will become a full-time, uh, a full professor. If you will not do that, you will not become a professor. You and your salar salary will not increase, even if you are the best professor. Even you are the best professor, if you will not make research in academia, you will not become a professor. I will tell you, di ba? So, di ba? That's the standard being set. So you have to comply with the standard. That's why there's a budget for research. If you will be teaching or if you will be asked to teach in the LSU and you want to make research, there's a budget for that. You just have to ask for it. Scholarship, they are giving scholarship. But what's the problem with research? Definitely it's very difficult to to do. You know, I, I think sakit sa ulo. You know, when I'm preparing my Juris Doctor thesis in law school, I've been in different libraries, UST, Ateneo, and still I cannot answer my questions, di ba? I still ask the former justices of the Supreme Court to give me insight. And at the end of the day, di ba? I was not able to solve the problem. <laughs> di ba? Okay, next. It helps in developing a team spirit if it is a participative budgeting. The problem with huge, huge corporations or large corporations is that it is top to bottom budgeting. The board of directors will set the budget and then you have to comply with the budget set by them. And that's very difficult. But I think in educational institution or non-stock non-profit, it's normally participative. You know, but because anong kagandahan kasi niyan, most of the workers in charitable are volunteers. So normally, they are amenable to low, uh, probably low honorarium. Sometimes they will be the one to contribute. That's the beauty when it comes to non-stock non-profit. You can compromise labor code. Why? Because the workers themselves are willing to be di ba? willing to waive their rights under the labor code. That is not true when it comes to profitable corporation. Di ba? Lab labor unions will not definitely uh, agree with that. Uh, next, it helps in reducing wastage and losses. I think sa office namin sa accountancy, there's already a program for a mandatory uh, online uh, submission of your PowerPoint and then online exam, they are encouraging us to minimize the use of paper. In the Supreme Court also, there's already an efficient paper uh, rule use. Previously, if you will file a petition, there must be 14 copies. And one petition is like this. 14 copies like this. Now the Supreme Court only requested for, I think, 4 copies now. Only 4 copies. And they will just be uh, asking the other justice for after, okay, after you finish with the petition, I will be the one to read. Because may soft copy na naman eh. So, bakit ba ang dami ng paper? Uh, next, it serves as a means for, uh, basis for evaluating performance and means of educating the managers. Now, this norm is the, the procedures for budgeting, especially when it comes to profitable corporation, but I will also apply it to non-stock non-profit or even uh, educational institution. First, establishing a key factor. What will be your key factor for forecasting? Normal revenue. When it comes to charitable institution, your key factor will be the donation. Aside from donation, your other income. What's your other income? Rental income from your idle funds. Aside from that, investment income from idle funds. But the, 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 the most common problem of my friends or the managers of some arts diocese in Batangas that amplifies that. The problem is they cannot forecast the donation. And I told them, you cannot forecast it. 
why it depends upon the particular mass it depends a particular celebration of course there is a example a national pilgrimage in our our mother of i think uh, uh carmel, carmel. Uh, carmel. Uh, uh, our mother of mediatrix uh, di ba? so you will go there now there will be more pilgrims or there will be higher donation but what's the problem how can you forecast that the same pilgrims will also go on that year so what's the problem? They want to hire several workers. Now, if your forecast is wrong about your donation and you hired so many, so many lay ministers, not hired, but as for saying so many lay ministers, and you will provide merienda or allowance to them, and then the donation is only like this, where will you get the fund? You have to borrow from the bank, and that will entail another interest expense. Unlike in profitable, in profitable, you have to look at the last sales revenue. And then you have to forecast. It's cool. Look at the tuition fee revenue last year, the number of enrollees, the increase in tuition fee, and you can predict the next year revenue. But when it comes to donation, you know, that's why I always admire them, the financial managers of this institution. How can you forecast the donation? I mean, ako, pag nag-donate, pay bye bye I mean, di ba? Hindi consistent. Although, I want it to be consistent. But depende sa nabubunod ko sa bulsa ko eh. Sabi nga sa ako, lawyer ka niya eh. Dapat fix na. Hindi ko nadala yung ano. Di ba? And then, that's the view. Yun yung advantage when it comes to our religion. Di ba? It's not compulsory. That's the problem. Because there is no fixed rate. You cannot determine. Unlike when it comes, I'm not stating a particular. There's other religions will require a certain percentage. That's why they can easily budget their expenditures. That's why can, they can easily put up diba, a particular uh, infrastructure, a new church, a new establishment, a new academy, because they can easily forecast it. Ilan yung gagraduate natin na member? Oh, empleyado na kayo. So now you have to give this much. So they can easily forecast it. Yeah, yeah, diba? That's a very difficult problem when it comes to forecasting. Now, first, preparing revenue budget. Let's use the example of a school. Your last year budget will be your basis. If you want to predict the next year budget. Now, you have to look at the number of enrollees for past 10 years. Is it increasing? If it is increasing, you compute the average increase. And that average increase for 10 years or 5 years will be your increase for the next year and factor the increase in tuition fee or possible effect of K-12. That's the reason why some universities laid off some of their general edu education professors. They were, I was disheartened by that decision because they were my friends. They are my friends, but they were laid off by a particular university. Why? Because the university cannot afford their salaries because there is no first year college students. Is so legal ba yun? That is legal because that is a an effect of a law. And if there's an effect of the law, a corporation may validly lay off their employees. So, diba? Other schools were able to cope up with that K-12 effect. Example, DLSC was able to cope up with that. USD, they were able, because they are large universities. And second, they were able to establish their senior high. So then, Rollis in the senior high was able to, to compensate for the loss in the first year college. And some of their teachers, some were compelled, others were asked to go to senior high and to teach. If you do not want to lose your chance. But that's the problem, of course. The, the purpose of senior high is good, you know? the, the logic, the rationality behind it is outstanding, but unfortunately, the Congress was not able to provide for proper remedy to those laid off teachers. Some of them were asked to take MBA, but of course, that will be subject to reimbursement. Some of my friends were taking MBA in the LSU, but are taking, but they are asked to pay for the tuition fee, subject to reimbursement by government. So, when you imagine that. Now, after determining your revenue budget, you have to prepare your cash receipts budget. Now, this is another problem. If you are the treasurer, or not, not actually the treasurer, but the chief financial officer of your 
non-stock non-profit educational institution, and you will be asked to expedite the collection of tuition fee. How will you do that? Offer discount. Number one, you offer discount. If you pay within 10 days, there's a 5% discount. But what's the problem? It will decrease your net income. Why? Because discount is a deduction to your revenue. Now, what is the normal uh, normal action of these schools? During midterm exam and final exam, they will require students to pay. And otherwise, they will not be allowed to obtain exam permit and they will not be allowed to take the exam. That is illegal. That is unreasonable. That is declared to be invalid by Commission in Higher Education and the big schools are doing it because I am teaching in these big schools. And when I was proctoring or I was, uh, my students were not able to pay their tuition fee, I will tell them, you take the exam, you tell your teacher, I told that, so you take it. If the teacher will not give you, go to my office, I will give you. Let me handle the president. I will talk to them. Because, diba, we are school, and then we are doing it to the students. How can we teach them values if we are the one? But according to CFO, if we will not do that, we will not be able to expedite. I told her, or he told him, you see, if the student will not pay the tuition fee, hold their clearance, but allow them to take the exam. Do not allow them to enroll on the next semester or hold their transcript of record, their diploma. But when it comes to examination during midterm, during final, you will require them. If you will be done, you have studied for five days without sleeping. And then at the start of the exam, your parents were not able to give you the tuition fee and the teacher will ask you to leave. What will you say? But, but of course, that's that's reality. That's why our our daughters, our our sons are no, you buy the tuition because aside from that is the shame. Hindi hindi na yung ano hindi magatig ng exam kasi magapag special. But the shame that the proctor will ask you to leave the class. Aga, bakit siya nalo magbas? Oh, di ba? Pare, bakit kalo magbas? Di ka nagpatig. Wala kasi kami pa nito ng si. But of course, at the end of the day, what is the goal of the CFO, the finance officer? To expedite the collection of cash. Kaya sabi nung, if we will not do that, we will have no cash for the payment of your salaries. If you're the proctor, ito ka muna. Eh, wala akong sahod. Kasi magbayad mo na kayo. Huwag mo yung mag-take. See? Di ba? But of course, again, at the end of the day, it's up to the to the finance manager to manage the funds. If they properly manage the funds, they have contingent funds for that, di ba? they will be able to pay the salaries on time without sacrificing the, <coughs> the dreams of their students. Of course, cost budget. This one is very difficult to prepare because the cost manager might increase the cost budget unnecessarily. Why? To create a slack. Ito oh, atin lang. Well, it's still in SGB. Wow, may magsusumbong ha. <coughs> Normally, my boss... They will ask us, oh, sige, how many will attend the outing? Uh, out of 50, only 40 will attend. But we will ask for budget for 50 persons. As a slack. What will it do? It will promote inefficiency. Oh, diba? But what's the problem if we will ask for exact 40? And then another one will attend. Oh, what will happen? See? <laughs> That's why we have sometimes we have to create slack. But be be sure that the slack is all, is not it's not much to create inefficiency. Because if the slack is too high, it will create inefficiency. It will not promote efficiency in the organization. But sometimes mas okay din yung top to bottom budgeting. The management will be the one to provide for the specific budget, but. An, Unfortunately, sometimes the management does not actually understand the expenditures in the bottom. Eh, kung example, si brother ganto sa amin, brother president will be the one to decide the amount of uh, pan paper, the amount of printer, ink that they will use. Eh, ano na malalaman yun? Di ba? But sometimes there are 
there are an implication. Cash payments budget. Problem, especially of non-stock non-profit. How to pay the expenses of the non-stock non-profit charitable education. Especially when it comes to electricity, water bills. Why? Sa amin, one month delay. Cut! Can you imagine in a particular archdiocese if the electricity will be cut during mass? Naku, di nakapagbayad ng electricity cut. Sir, ginagawa ba yun? Well, probably, yes, probably, because, of course, Meralco, these electric cooperatives, we do not care about the particular organization. You did not pay your electric bill, we will cut your electricity. So, you have to manage your cash for the payment of those, especially when it comes to salaries of your employees, because under the labor code, they must be paid within 15 days, either through ATM or through legal tender, but not in checks. So normally, checks yung bayad, di ba? Pag we withdrawing ka pa, ma-hold up ka pa. Checks are not legal tender. Di ba? They are not money. Kaya ATM or cash. Eh, can you imagine? You will ask the employee for the encashment in a particular bank. Di ba? Tsaka, the, the beauty of ATM is that, although ito ha, Normally, if you will tap a particular bank for the payment of their salary through ATM, there are freebies. Example, iPad, tablet, because I've been there. Diba? They are asking, Uy, kami nalang yung kuhanin niyo. Oh, di ba meron pa kayong free iPad, tablet? Avail of the benefits of this banking institution. And also for the safeguard. And you can trace the transaction through banks, if you will do it through banks. And of course, net income budget. This one is not, of course, applicable, but not that more, uh, that not that important when it comes to non-stock, non-profit education. Because at the end of the day, your goal is to achieve the mission, vision of your organization, but not to increase your net income. Probably, you will increase your net income to increase the funds for future projects, but you will not accumulate the net income. You will still use that net income for your mission, vision. Okay, of course. Now, this is the problem. Fixed budget or flexible budget. Now, what's the difference between the two? A fixed budget is that you will give a salary to an individual. A fixed budget, meaning 10,000 per month. That will be your salary. Or, you will be given salary of uh, 1,100 uh, per, per student. Or 10 pesos per student. What will you choose? Or if you are the organization, the school, will you offer 20,000 per month to a teacher or 10 pesos per student? What's the problem if you will offer 20,000 per month? Even there is no student, you have to pay 20,000 per month. But if there are plenty of students, 100,000 students times 10, you have to pay 1 million to the teacher. That's why Jollibee is using peak salary. Why? Kasi kahit sobrang dami ng mga customers in Jollibee, they will still pay the minimum wage. I mean, that's why most of the crews in Jollibee, McDonald's, normally, sometimes sometimes some of them are lazy because even if I'm, I'm, di ba? I, I'm doing my best, but I will still receive 350, I will not do my best. Employee of the month. Di ba? You of the month. Can you imagine? You work for eight hours. You serve for thousands of customers, and you will still receive. Uh, let's make it simple. In case of a praise, okay. Okay, ano to, ha? Assuming the the how much is the normal allowance of a praise? So normal yung ina mas. Assuming five thousand, and the attendees in the mass are one million. Oh, if you are the praise, sumisigaw ka ne. Para marinig na lahat. And you will still receive 10,000. If it is 1 peso per attendee, you will receive 1 million. See? You know the reason why the salary, not the salary, the honorarium of priests is fixed. Because we have many attendees. So exploited by mga priests? Yes. Exploited in the sense, di ba? Kung, ako yung, kung meron kami yung labor union of priests, let's change our salary from fixed to Variable. But at the end of the day, of course. Eh, 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 di ba? Eh, 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 e
that you have, di ba? Because sometimes, the problem with that, with this is that you have certain vows. I think your some of your vows will conflict with that. But financially, financially, di ba? I mean, financially, if you are a priest, di ba? So, can you imagine? Punong-puno na yung simbahan. Oh, sige. Can you imagine? If there's a communion, and normally the priest will lead the communion, one million will line up. Ang sabi ng one million, gusto po namin si Father para mabilas kami ka. So, ayaw po na, yung lay minister, tsaka na lang po si Father. And Father will receive still 10,000. Di ba? But of course, that's the decision of Yeah, I do not know who decides in a particular archdiocese. Is it the, no, the, the bishop? And the bishop is soul. Right? Ah, with elders. Have a Board of consultants. Board of ah, in, the, in the articles. Di ba? In, In the articles, the bishop is the only one to ask. But we have board of ano, consultors. Of course, they they know it, di ba? They have they have their wisdom. We have our own canon law. We have our own church law. We have our own canon law. Ah, yeah, that's a problem. Another one is the the canon law. You have to abide by it. But of course. Sometimes, di ba? That's why this is sometimes conflicting when it comes to non-stop. Now, this one, fixed budget, the first of budget which decide to remain and change irrespective of level of activity actually attained. This is your salary. That's a fixed budget. That's why regardless of the number of attendees, your honorarium will not change. What is the uh, advantage of this? When it comes to the corporation, definitely, it will increase the profitability of the corporation, but it will demoralize the employees. Definitely. The employee of McDonald's, there are many customers. I will still receive 350 regardless. In one in, in, in USD, I'm teaching at least, I think, 500 students. And I will still receive the same salary per hour. See how much will you to earn? Because of course, most uh, the the vice president for finance of your vice region is a CPA. So, marami tayong estudyante. Let's make the salary of teachers fix. So, but unfortunately, when my student is only two, my students are only two, oh. uh, they have to pay the same. Diba? Meaning, you have to use the fixed budget when there's a forecast of increasing revenue. But if the forecast is decreasing revenue, you have to use your variable budget. So that if there are only two attendees in a mass, so in the salary of a priest is two pesos per attendee, two times two, the church will be able to say enough. But of course, di ba? That is first speaking about um, we we were taught yesterday that for people who have routinary uh, work, their motivation is based on again what they receive. But if your work is uh, cognitive, um, uh, administrative, sometimes the motivation of service purpose uh, goes beyond the monetary term. That that's that's true when it comes to non stock non profit educational charitable but when it comes to profitable corporations diba? let's face it let's be realistic the number one motivation on factor is the salary diba? if you have children you are the head of the family and you have been offered by a by a charitable institution at salary of 10,000 per month and a 1 million per month by SM Diba? Real, honestly, which will you choose? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but of course, we have we have to respect some some individuals who are of course truthful or honest to their to their uh, vocation. Because uh, I have a auntie who is a nun. 
She's a graduate of UB. She's very intelligent, my cousin, but she continues to serve the, the remote communities. And they are very rich in our barangay. And I'm asking her, you, are, you have been offered to work in SM, like this, head of the particular department, head of the foundation, and you still to continue to do your, your vocation. And she is still asking for, uh, for allowance to her mother. Who can explain that? Logic can never explain that. That's why sometimes when logic ends, their faith leads. Well, that's the normal logic. Yes. When logic ends, ends faith leads. If logic, based on accounting, finance, cannot explain your decision, that's pure faith. It's pure faith. What, why, why are you doing that? Because that is my faith. That's what he said to me. He said, that is my faith. I can I can no longer argue with her. Ba? Yes, syempre. O ito tita, ganito yung kikitain mo dito. Ganito. Pagka to makakabili ka lang ng ako. Mas mabibigyan mo ng kotse. Kaya gano. Sabi niya it's not about that, di ba? Eh up to now I cannot understand it. Why? Because I'm a CPA. I was trained in accounting school to focus on profitability. So, of course, one side of my brain will will say, "Okay, you go with it." That sometimes I cannot understand. You know, but of course, medyo naiintindi na ako. <laughs> Zero-based budgeting, it is a type of budget where managers are required to justify all budgeted expenditures, not just changes in the budget from the previous years. Meaning, if your budget is fixed at 50,000 per year, and then there's increase from 50 to 100,000, you have to justify the whole 100,000, not merely the increase of 50,000. That's why zero-based budgeting is applicable for non-stock, non-profit, charitable, and government institutions. Why? You have to justify all your budget, not merely the increase. Because if you will justify only the increase in your budget, now, what's the reason for the fixed budget? That's why you have to use zero-based budgeting in your organization. As the heads of your different departments to justify all their ex uh, budgeted expenditures from 1 peso up to 1 million, not merely the increase. Now, this one is a case, and you, I, you're free to give your comment. Pondong Alanga Incorporated, a non-stock, non-profit charitable, primarily helps the underprivileged families in the community. Its working fund is normally provided by variable contributions from different companies, meaning donation from different companies. Its finance manager proposed a fixed Cost budget, meaning expenditure, expense of 10 million per year for its main activity for a period of 10 years. If you are the member of the board, how will you decide explain? According to the maintenance manager, our expenses for the year will be fixed at 10 million per year. So, if you are the member of the board who will approve the scheme, will you diba? approve it or disapprove it? Volunteer, no? Volunteer, no? manager will merely give you the option. You will be the last thing. Sige. Ah, why? Meaning, there is uncertainty. Yeah. And the problem when, when, when it comes to non-stock, non-profit, charitable is the uncertainty when it comes to funds. That's why normally, the activi our activities in non-stock, non-profit, charitable institutions are changing every year. It depends our, upon our budget. Unless we have a fixed rental income from our idle lands or idle property which are being leased out to other corporations. When it comes to fixed revenue, then we can provide for a fixed cost. But when it comes to variable revenue, it will be very difficult. But now, what is the advantage if we will follow that, that proposal? Well, the advantage that if there will be increase in donation, uh, definitely it will be favorable to us. But that is a high risk, high return decision. That's why fixed cost is an aggressive approach. That is a high risk but high return 
strategy. That's why before you purchase a particular building, before you rent a particular condominium unit, a particular property for investment purposes, that is a fixed cost. Please do not decide immediately. Think of the consequences. It might provide high return, but it involves high fees. What's the time? 11.30. Let's go on to this one. It's a very interesting topic. Responsibility accounting. It's a branch of accounting that focuses on evaluating performance of individual <coughs> managers. Now, what's the problem with this? If you are the manager of a particular department, you will be evaluated based on your performance. So, I mean, so auditing firm, I think, I think 75% of your time in SGB must be spent with the client, meaning you must always be with the client. Because if you are with the client, you are increasing the revenue of the organization. You know what? Some schools provide that you must still you must have at least 24 units. You must have at least three research per year. If not, then you will not be promoted to assistant professor. Now, sir, who will set the standard? Well, of course, the steps in responsibility accounting first establish companies' long-term and short-term goals based on company's mission, vision. The board of trustees will set the mission, vision. And the mission, vision, of course, the goals must be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. But of course, time-bound, definitely how many years will be achieved. It. Realistic, you know what I mean? Do not set a standard which is unrealistic. Example, your goal is to make your employees to work for 25 hours, that is impossible you know, because there's only 24 hours per year. Upper day attainable, of course, measurable and specific. You know, of course, so we we'll decide the goals and objectives, the board of trustees. But if I'm a member of the board of trustees, I will ask the, of course, definitely the, the rank and file employees. I want them to give their opinion. Why? Because if the standard is very high, it will demoralize them. If the standard is very low, it will not motivate them to achieve or to aspire for better performance. Next, identify the different responsibility centers and responsible managers. Of course, we have four centers. Number one is revenue center. From the term itself, it is a center that influences or manages revenue. In school, the normal revenue center is the admission department. Why? Because the admission department controls the number of enrollees. That's why if you are the admission officer of a particular school, you will be evaluated based on the number of students you have encouraged to enroll in your university. Now, when it comes to an unstuck non-profit uh, charitable institution, the revenue center will be the department responsible for fundraising. And we have head of that fundraising department. So if the fundraising activity did not achieve our target donation revenue, definitely the head will be the one to be reprimanded. But will you reprimand a volunteer? See, that's a different story when it comes to charity. I volunteer na po ako eh. Eh, wala tumakbo sa panran eh. Hindi ginawa namin yung best namin. But of course, di ba? When it comes to profitable institution, you have to determine did the sales department do their job? Kaya yung mga sales agent na nagbebenta ng mga isa, uh, I think, medicine. Mga tawag doon, uh, medrep and milk representative. Tawag doon, milk repre medrep, milk representative. Di ba? They are evaluated based on the revenue. Cost center, definitely, most of you are head of a cost center. A cost center, uh, manages or controls the cost. And the goal in a cost center is to minimize cost. They always ahead of a particular ano, parokya, di ba? Yeah. Di ba? You, are you evaluated by the I think, the bishop based on the expenditure you have used? Meaning, are you required to minimize your cost? Yeah. Yes. Ah, not necessarily. Yes. I, yes. I, I mean, if I'm a bishop, di ba? Kunyari lang. I will evaluate my my priest or the head of the particular parish priest based on the expenditure. 
Hindi, if they were not able to minimize their cost, anong ginagawa nyo? You are cost inefficient. But of course, if you can justify that you use the public, the funds of the church for charitable purposes, the mission of our <coughs> religious organization, then I will not reprimand you. Instead, I will encourage you to do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, uh, well, uh, I'm not just trying to say it for so much. Uh, we were asked before, uh, when we had a new treasurer in the diocese, to give our annual budgets. Uh, but the, I was expecting that we will be given a fixed budget for the whole year if we are going to give the whole bud- our whole exp- expenses for the year. <coughs> So they asked me to give the five-year expenses. Five years. Oh, five years. So, okay, so I gave them our five-year experience. And it is almost a million each year. That is including the, <coughs> the salarization of our staff. And then after that, nothing was heard about it. Uh, the, the, the board did not. The, did, they did not do anything about it. I was expecting that we will be given a budget for each year. Uh, even how much, uh, just just so that we will also uh, our expenses might be also trimmed down. That, that, that's a problem if a standard will not be set by the board, the head of the particular uh, corporation. That's so why. Not, so nothing came out about this. So we are just working on our own resources and our operations. So we are just depending on donations and whatever mm. that will come to us. That's the normal problem. Right? That is not normally present in a profitable corporation because they have a budget for that. That's why, that's why sometimes right, it's very difficult to analyze the operation of a non-stop non-profit. But of course, at the end of the day, if there's a budget given to you, there's a standard, the expenditures must be minimized. But of course, not to the detriment of the attainment of your Purpose, because that's the more, that's the I think that is more, that that will result to more problem. If you will minimize the cost, but it will result to the non-attainment of your goals. Example, you minimize the cost, it result to the to the destruction of the church, diba? The foundation, you did not provide for maintenance cost. That is problematic. Now, profit center, of course, this is only applicable to. Uh, cooperatives, non-stock non uh, profit education is that you control not only the revenue but also the expense but also the profit. Example, we have different profit center in DLSU, <laughs> College of Law of DLSU. The dean controls the revenue through the encouragement of enrollees. He controls the expenses of the, the salaries of the law professor. And if the College of Law incurs net loss, definitely the dean of the College of Law will be reprimanded. That's what happened in UST Elementary School. That's why it was closed. It is a profit center. There's revenue, there are expenses, but the revenue cannot offset the expenses. It experienced, I think, five-year net loss, so the Board of Regents decided to close it. So, diba? but but that's the, that's a very hard decision because most of the students there are children of the faculty members. But in order to save the the whole institution, diba? we might sacrifice this portion. Well, that's why sometimes even the College of Law is prestigious. <coughs> Some corporations close the College of Law because it does not contribute to the profitability of the institution because of the high salary of the professors. But sometimes some some schools consider uh, the College of Law as their, well of course their mission mission to help the poor. So even it is incurring losses, they continue. In, in De La Salipa, our first batch, we are only seven students. So, diba? so, nung graduate. so definitely that that's the institution, that, that department incurred net loss. Now I think the graduating student are only 10, but they still continue to, to operate. That's why I'm asking the dean, how can you afford the salary of Dino Pateneo, <coughs> reviewer of San Because law, prepo- law professors are teaching all over the country. And they have no loyalty on a particular university. They can teach anywhere. They can teach. Professors of Pateneo, San Beda, 
UP, Lasan, they are the same. They are just scheduling their time for, but but they have the same salary. And then I, I do not know how does the finance manager was able to offset the expenditures. And of course, investment center. When it comes to investment center, you do not only control cost, revenue, and profit. You only control the, also control the amount of investment. Now, of course, these are the standard, of course. First, I establish the standard and measurement performance evaluation of each center. In cost center, the goal is to minimize cost. So you have to set up the standard cost. Example for electricity. If the standard cost is 10,000 per month, and our electricity cost became 11,000, we have to look at the officer of that particular department responsible for the increase. Eh, baka din yung pinapatay yung aircon. Pag na, pagka, ano, nakalimod yung patay yung ilaw sa comfort room. Because if we will not pinpoint the responsible person, now, what will happen to our expenditure? Of course, revenue center to maximize revenue. Of course, we have standard revenue to be set by the board. Profit center to maximize profit. And revenue center to maximize return on investment. This is an example. We have different segments in a particular institution. We have elementary, high school, college, and we have the graduate school. And we will classify them in accordance with different centers. And we will evaluate which center is the best if each center is a cost center. If it is a cost center, what is the goal? To minimize cost. If they are cost center, which center has the lowest cost? Elementary. It has a cost of only one million. So if they are all cost center, the best center, the center to be rewarded will be elementary department. Why? Because its cost is only one million. If it is a cost center, diba? if all of them are cost center, we will just look into the cost. And the cost of elementary is the lowest, which is only one million. That is the best center. Diba? But if we will make all of them revenue center, if it is revenue, to maximize revenue. And which center is the best? Of course, the college. It has the highest revenue of 30 million. If you will make up all of them profit center, profit means revenue minus expenses. So the net income of elementary is 9, high school 15, college 10, graduate 2. So if you will make them uh, profit center, the best department will be the high school because it has the highest net income of 15 million. But if we will make them investment center, investment center means you have to compute the return on investment. Return on investment is net income divided by total assets. So 9 million divided by 100, 9%. 15 million loss. A loss pala to, sorry. Hindi ba to loss? Uh, net, income. Net, income. net income. Net income to, sorry. Hindi ko siguro na 30 million to. So, 30 million divided by 200,000. Siguro dapat 5 yata. 5 million. Mas, sige, 5. Ang alam ko, 5 to, sorry. Pakitanggal yung 5. So, 7.5%. So, if that is the case, kung loss to, the best center will be college. College, sorry. And then, 10 divided 40, 25. 5 na, pakitanggal na. And 2 divided by 4, 50%. So, based on that, if it is an investment center, the best center is the graduate school. Diba? Why? Because even its net income is only 2 million, but its investment is 4 million, it provides a higher yield of 50%. So, ano ibig sabihin no? Do not trust a high investment. You have to look at the return of investment. You invested... 100 million, but that 100 million asset provided only 9 million income. So only 9% return per year. This one, you invested 4 million, but it provided 2 million net income, resulting to 50% profit. Therefore, you can recover your investment within 2 years. 2 years pa na, break even na tayo. The next, the third year, we will obtain profit. Di ba? That's why it depends upon the particular type of center. Now, okay, next, standard costing. Now, this one, it will be computation value. This one will be 
Competition to, but medyo mahirap lang makonte. <laughs> Di ba? I'll try to give you an ano, kasi normally, some charitable institution produce products. And you have to determine who is responsible for the particular variance. So what's a variance? Variance is the difference between the actual cost and standard cost. Example, the standard cost is 1 million, uh, 100,000. But the actual cost incurred is 110. So there's an favorable variance of 10,000 pesos. Who will be responsible for that variance? Okay? So this one, during August 2009, a charitable institution produced 1,000 units of a product using 3,600 pounds of direct material at a cost of 2.2 per pound. The direct material standard requires 4 pounds of material per unit of product at a price of 2 pesos. So, if we can see, the standard price is 2 pesos per pound. So, let's first focus on the first variance. Material price variance. Sir, what is material price variance? It refers to the variance, the difference between the Actual price, 2.20, and the standard price. And question, in your opinion, who will be responsible for material price or purchasing 